six thirty one. I'm being late. I'll be in order. Yes, sir. Do we have any addition to the agenda? Yeah, it was one is next step yeah. in discussion about the town garage, and then a um, right of way permit came in today that is connected to a septic system that I'm bringing to you this evening so they can keep going forward on this project. Hopefully, okay, I'll be able to fit that in somewhere. Uh, public comment. Hi, I. Go ahead first. Hi. So this is yeah. Patty Chumar. I think you're acknowledging me. Yes. Um, okay. We're looking for your comment and your. So you are a member of the public. Yes. Yep. Um, so I'm Patty Giovara. I live on the county road here in East Montpelier, and um, so I, um, I, and before I um, make a. Well, I guess it's maybe part of my comment, but I attended the meeting earlier this year that talked about the county road closures and Larry's um, proposal. And uh, anyway, I, I looked at the meeting minutes and I didn't see that I, I that I was listed as having made a comment in that meeting. Um, I just am mentioning that. But anyway, um, I um, heard uh, through the grapevine um, that uh, through some people from the rec committee um, that there are four dates for the uh, road closure um, going this year. And so I went back and watched the um, select board, the last select board meeting. Um, and I didn't, I just want to also just say that I didn't notice that that was coming up as an agenda item with the select board. So it really caught me by surprise um, when I heard about this. And I think that's really my biggest thing here is that I was surprised. My guess is that select board meetings do not have to be warned on front porch forum, but I do want to say it's really helpful when they are. And I guess I need to like, just make myself, um, more educated about where to look for and to watch for the select board meeting agendas. So anyway, it's helpful when they're there, but it, um, I didn't notice that that agenda item for the last select, that the last select board meeting agenda was posted. So I missed it. So anyway, I just want to say that, you know, I mean, obviously this event's going to happen on the 9th of July. So I understand that um, I'm not trying to like reverse any course or anything, but I'm, I am disappointed though, that after the select board voted down um, um, doing the, the event three times at the meeting earlier this year, and that was conditional on the insurance and the safety training that now that those, you know, with the insurance and safety training issues resolved that another vote is taken for four times. And I understand that I also, that it's revocable. I may or may not be using the right word, but um, based on the results of the first one. So um, I guess my, I just have two suggestions, I guess, you know, so first of all, I'm, I'm disappointed because it feels like this is sort of like happening without being out in the open. And, you know, I understand, you know, Larry is saying he's going to communicate with people on County Road. It'd be nice if he communicated before, because this is going to come as uh, quite a surprise, I think. But anyway, um, my suggestions are that the detour should not start at Barnes Road. That's a very difficult road for people to negotiate if they're towing a boat out to callous or something or a camper or whatever. That's very difficult. I think it's much easier to divert people. I'm not saying close the road necessarily, but at least for the detour to divert people at Center Road. And um, I noticed that Carl's not there. I will make those suggestions directly to Carl and to Larry as well. And the other suggestion that I have is, a, is to do some data collection um, because um, you know, given that 
the feedback that was collected um, has been kind of discounted um, for various reasons. Um, I'm a little bit concerned that any feedback after the July 9th event could also be discounted. And I know you asked for a report. And so I'm going to suggest to, and, and also volunteer to help do some actual data collection. You know, how many people are taking advantage of the opportunity? Where are they from? How many cars are getting diverted? How many cars are, you know, entering and exiting the closed section of the road, that sort of thing. So anyway, that's really um, all that I have to say. Okay, so I'd like to address it um, from the beginning. And the first thing that I'm getting out of the conversation that you're pointing to us is that we did not post our agenda. So the agenda is posted okay. in the way that it is statutorily required to be posted. The front porch form thing was an idea that Michael Dwayne had. Yep. I do typically try to get them on there, but frankly, been quite busy. It's not required. And I didn't, did not get that agenda posted to front porch form prior to the last meeting. But again, that was always a nice to have. And this was actually an example of why I was concerned with people being too dependent on front porch forum, because it is not the official means and it's on our website. It's, you know, the way it's kind of always been. It's on our town website. Yep. Um, if you would like to be included in emails, it actually does get emailed to a group of citizens that I inherited from Bruce Johnson. Um, and it is posted physically at the town office, um, at the post office, and at Four Corners Schoolhouse. And that's how it's always been. The front porch form thing is actually pretty new. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. Yes. So four places it was posted. Number two, you said it was not on our agenda. I'm oh no! It, at, it was on the agenda. agenda. No, it, it yeah, it was on the agenda. It was on the agenda. It was yeah. posted places. We're yeah. not trying to hide anything. We have minutes here from the meeting. It's a full page of minutes where that was discussed at our open meeting. Everyone is everyone is open. Everyone can come to the meeting. Everyone's welcome. Yeah, yeah. nothing is going. As a matter of fact. We have never tried to hide anything about this. Everything has been an open meeting, open discussion. Our agendas have been posted. The minutes are here to prove that. Mm -hmm. So when you say we're trying to do something behind people's backs, I take offense at that because so, we are very open about our meetings. Yeah, yeah. Everyone's welcome. Yeah, and like I said, I understand. I, I'm just saying how... Um, I think Gina makes a good point, you know, becoming dependent on the front porch form, right, to know. So I just didn't know that it was happening. And and I'm not, so I'm not like, I, I think I have more, you know, I just think, you know, Larry's going to get a lot of backlash. And I'll, I'll talk with him about it, right? I just, you know, I think he should be trying to get more feedback and be more open, et cetera. So I'm not trying to point a finger at, the select board, you're doing everything by the, okay, I'm not trying to say that. I'm saying I that, you know, I, I think maybe, um, I, I guess the thing that's concerning is that the feedback that was solicited by the select board was kind of disregarded for various reasons. Um, and, but one citizen is able to come to the select board and gain approval for something that's gonna affect lots of people. And he wasn't, you know, it's like, Larry, did you get input from other people? So like I said, no, you haven't done anything wrong. July 9th is gonna happen. I, un, and I think it's gonna be unfortunate that there's gonna be a lot of, lot of I, it could be a lot of blowback when people find out what's going on, but that, so uh, that aside, so I'm not trying to say that the select board did anything wrong, but I'm telling you how it feels to me, right? And I'm one person on that stretch of road. And it's not just the people on the stretch of road, it's the people out beyond the stretch of the road, right? Um, 
so so I guess at this point, like my and I and I will talk with Larry and and Carl. I want to suggest to them that the detour start at center or at least divert traffic there. It is. I don't know how often any of the pe other people on this at the meeting or on the select board travel on barns. It's a tricky road. Um, so, and, and again, and the other piece is, I think there should be some actual data collection and I will talk with them about that because it will be easy to just, you know, what's he gonna report on, right? 15 okay, so, people said they had so a good time. Just on the schedule. Three people that want to say, I'm not going to say, I'm done. You're done? Just on the schedule. And Joey wanted to say something. Oh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Um, what would you like to say? Patty, real quick, on the oh. on, on the website, uh, it lists the agenda and it lists um, all of the information for the meeting tonight. And under the town administrator's report, Gina has listed our meetings throughout uh, going through October 16th. Okay. We also meet the first, we meet the first normally in the third of of um, of the month. Monday, so it's the first, the first the Mondays of the month. And it's it's pretty much it's not a surprise when we have select board meetings. Is that right? Oh, I, oh I, yeah. I, I totally get that. Yep. Not trying to say that, that, that it is. I understand that. Yeah, Patty, I just wanted to address um your feeling that the data was disregarded before. I'm really sorry that you feel that way. Um and I just wanted you to know that if 100% of the feedback was negative, then of course we would have listened to that, but there's more nuance to data interpretation. And I did have regard and think carefully about all of the data that I was given, including negative data. And it seemed clear from what I was made to understand that a lot of the negative feedback could be from actually misinterpretation or miscommunication and some elements that hadn't been smoothed out yet that might actually be corrected on the first event. So I hope this can um, help yeah. assuage your fears that we were just given data and disregarding it because that's not what happened. Okay, thank you. So, so the other thing about the approval for the first event is revocable, meaning that if we have a lot of, you're just saying that we may have a lot of blowback on this. If we do, we can say, hey, this isn't gonna work. So it's not set in stone, he's gonna have four events. Yeah. This this could be ended after the first event. Or well, second or third or fourth. Whatever, yeah. If we have a lot of negative feedback and this is not gonna work, we can revoke it. We can revoke our approval. Anyway. I'm okay. gonna speak from a East Montpelier resident perspective. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, the one thing I will say is no communication has come out yet about this event. So one thing I think that Patty's also feeling, the only team person in this town that has reached out to actually get feedback in an attempt to get feedback using Front Porch Forum from a wide forum of our yep. population was town administrator Gina Jenkins. Nothing else has gone out yeah. right. about this event. So I think part of what we're feeling, and this has been a concern of mine, there's now gone, nothing has been sent out about what is planned for the event, what the new plans are, what, so to, to Zoe's point about communication, nothing's happening. So I think that this is something that the select board should take into consideration with this as well. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what's tough. Where Patty is, this, I've been waiting to see something come on Front Porch Forum, some information, nothing yet. So as you know, residents don't yet know outside of what was in that meeting, yeah. what the plans are and nothing was really clearly spelled out yet. So the thing about the way we've handled this is we've passed it off to the rec board mm -hmm. and to one other member of the select. So it was sort of out of our pur purview as far as advertising the event. It, it wasn't up to us. Yeah. So. And that's what I mean from a resident perspective. Yeah. Nothing's really come out yet. So I think yeah. people are going to start to get concerned as we come up to the July 4th, week, week of July 4th, that well, what mean, is happening, you know? So. You say, hey, we've got people concerned. It's going to happen. Can't wait. What's that? It's getting well, late. I, right. 
you know, it's just one, it's, um, it'll be, I think it's an important factor for the select board in can, you know, to watch what is the communication. Um, you know, the last time that this happened, I posted on front porch forum about it happening in a very neutral way. I wasn't, you know, like, I'm not like, no, I didn't try to make a position. I was just like, hey, this is happening. I want people to know because it wasn't there. So anyway, I, that's, but you know, that, that can be part of your evaluation um, of how it goes, I guess. Well, we'll, we'll take everything under consideration. We'll reach out to Larry Gilbert and we will definitely be reviewing the situation after the first event. I, I can promise that. It will yeah. be on our agenda. And I think you know now where the four places are that we post our agenda. Yep. It's not yep. always on front foot forum, but it is posted. Yep. So, oh, yeah. And, yep. Get on the mailing list too. Yeah, I was going to say, and Patty, email please send me yeah. an email with your contact information and I can add you to that to that group. Right. Sure. Thank you. And then you'll know for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. All right. So thank I, you. Man, we better go back to that. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, I felt rushed. So, but thank you for coming in. And obviously, this is not going to go away. It will be on our agenda as we move forward. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Right. Thank you. Bye bye. Yeah. Okay. So, we have to review the minutes. Have you already done it? I think they're wonderful. I'll make a motion to accept the minutes. I'll second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The aye <laughs> appear to have it. They do have it. The minutes are approved. Um, back, back to um, public comment. If Carl's yeah. not here today, um, if you're lonely up there, I can move to sit next to you. I'm not lonely at all. Okay. <laughs> I just want to check. I just want to make sure the chairman's comfortable. Like, anyway, I, you no, know, good company. I'm not well, I, just, I just want you to be happy. If you're happy, I'm happy. Yeah, we can move on. <laughs> I'm good. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So, muddled our way to the first item, first three bullet points. So, the next item is Washington County Sheriff review of May statistics, consideration of contract renewal for July 1st. Okay, so we have the statistics here. Primarily speeding. Yeah. Oh, what a <laughs> Not surprising. Yeah. That was a child restraint violation. Yeah, there was it's it's quite the list. I uh I actually saw them out in North Montpelier, um, parked on the road that goes over to Plainfield. Um, and I was really happy to see them there because people fly down that hill. Yeah. yeah and uh, the yeah, they were they were off just to the side. It, you know, I, I fortunately I wasn't speeding, but um <laughs> you know what? It makes you think now. It makes you think when you drive through there. I make sure that I and I'm not speeding. I wonder if they've been over to the center. Yeah, I don't, I don't go out that way that often. I do quite often. I didn't see him out there, but yeah. I know that's always a big, big speed thing okay. over there. Um, and then the contract, as you recall, when Sheriff, um, yeah. when he was here previously, that they were increasing their rate yeah. um, to $60 per hour starting in July. So that's obviously what this contract reflects. So if we continued with the five hours per week that we've allocated between that and then the mileage reimbursement that we would have, we should be within budget to essentially continue this contract. Mm -hmm. And I think it's important for, to note that as well, we are expecting the services of the Washington County Sheriff's Department to assist with the county road event that was approved at the last meeting. So yeah, that's probably important. something we... You, you may want to consider continuing into July 1st. Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So that's a year contract. Correct. Sounds good. <laughs> I'm good with it. When you guys start passing around things to sign, you have the actual, there's two right there. sets of correct. I do have a question related to that. Okay. I, sure. uh, as council, if I have a question regarding some sort of law enforcement issue, it's, so it's no longer BSD, but Washington. Okay. Yeah. You got it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. They're nothing against the Vermont State Police. Right. They just weren't able to do what they yeah. had sort of expected. I mean, we sort of expect them to do some of their hours, right. you know, under the contract. I mean, we're, we're only just billed for what they did. 
But when they were doing no hours, it's like, eh, you know. So what's the point? Yeah, what was the point? And there are citizens in town that expect us to have some law enforcement. I mean, so I think it was a good move to move the, because they actually commit to doing the hours and they do it. Right. So yeah. that's okay. Um, so anyway. Were we going to talk about renewing the contract with them? Yeah. Mm -hmm. so are we going to do a vote? Well, we should make a motion if people right. are happy with it. With the contract and the and the rate, I'm fine with it. Yeah, I mean we've discussed it before. It was this is nothing new. Yeah. I'll make a motion to um, approve the contract from July first, twenty twenty three, through June thirtieth, twenty twenty four, at the uh, appropriate the uh, agree, 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 agreed agreed upon agreed upon rates yeah. and hours. It's a renewal, actually. Okay. Yeah. So, we have a second on that? I'll second it. Oh, do we second it? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Here to have it, they do have it. All right. So, the next thing that we have to consider are the cemetery price changes. And there are a definite Um, mm -hmm. definitely, you're they're next. definitely higher than they were, <laughs> but competitive with if you look the the other pages, yeah. there's, there's other material yeah. there. They look pretty competitive, if not cheaper in some respects, at least some of the other towns. So that's sort of why I came to talk about this a little bit. Okay, so you want shot to take a seat? Elsewhere? Sure. Yeah, whatever you'd like. So uh, with our new cemetery contract, uh, James's rates uh, are more than what we originally charged. That's sort of where this all came from. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, so I took the opportunity to kind of raise them to the levels that our other cemeteries are at. Um, now, the other thing to know is I'm doing this unilaterally outside the scope of the committee because yeah. the chairman refused to call the meeting. Oh. So just can I, can I ask you a question? Is there, sure. this, how about the foundation for the stone? Is that that's should be in here somewhere too? Um, it's like six hundred bucks, isn't it? Maybe I didn't see it. I you know I'm not having it in front of me either. Um, no, but usually I I, I hired somebody outside. That, that oh, wasn't really up to them. Yeah. So well, so Elliot has. Was that, uh, was oh, like well the, the the same company does Plainmont, Plainmont. They yeah. do Plainmont, saw yeah. Plainmont. To and they're and they're doing the foundation. Yeah, so I don't I don't care one way or the other. I just didn't know. I thought they would it would be there. That's all. I'm wondering if it's uh, I, I don't look at the contract. I'm wondering if if setting foundations falls outside of the contract, and that you would be hiring him independently. Outside. You could hire him or hire whoever you wanted to. Right. Make. Okay. Right. I know That's that. The they, way I thought it was. I know his family. And, and it together. probably was. I think I think Elliot got done pouring foundations. Oh yeah. That's, that's when I asked him about it because I had one for it. Right. I just hired, you know, Matt Pico. Right, right. And then he set the film. Yeah. So, but there's nothing about film here anyway. Yeah, right, right. So, no, I'm just, that's, I'm just questioning. But no, it's, it, it's a good question. And if that's something you want to put in the contract or the price list, actually. Is it so people will know because whether you're going to get around, they, they might do all this and then right. suddenly right at the last second, they're going to say, hey, no, we can't do any of that until we have that have foundation that. for it. So, well, no, you can do all this. You can yeah, yeah. So, yeah, you can't I, set a stone. You can't set the stone. But there's nothing about a stone in here anyway. Right. So it's like if someone asks about a stone, that's up to them. Right. So the way is it, it was when I did. Is it this part? I know this is a little the okay, configuration of monument it's, it's, foundations it's, it's, measuring yeah. less than 16 by 52 right. to the contractor. So yeah. we wrote this okay. ish that they're paying him directly. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah. Right. Responsible for the burial. Right. It's not really it's a, a little bit. Right. But right. It's, it's just yeah, not. that's what he needs to be yeah. paid. And when I asked right. Elliot about it, I'm like, oh, you just get your own stone made and then you hire somebody to set it. Right. Yeah. And usually the mining dealerships that sell you the stone have people to set it as well. Yeah, that's so, always the, it's part of the conversation. Right. It's like, do you want us to set the stone? And okay. like, oh, no, I have somebody else to do it. Right. 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 Yeah. And and in his contract, he will do it for six hundred dollars for a particular amount of square. Yeah, that's what says the contract, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay. So that's fine then. Yeah. So uh, my logic um, behind the, the actual numbers is 
uh, it puts the onus on the people actually use the cemetery, right? So people yeah. actually using the cemetery are now going to pay more. To, in theory, the taxpayers are going to pay less um, as a result of that. And then uh, oh, two, it's the phrase on the expenses. Correct. Yeah. And number two, um, it is in line with the vast majority of the other cemeteries. Yeah. yeah. I know it's an increase, but I don't really have a problem with it. I think there's going to be a lot of transitioning in, in cemetery burials in the years uh, yeah. moving forward, you're gonna have cremations and you're gonna have composting. Yeah, and, yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, uh, you cemetery, have a lot of choices now. Cemetery is pretty full. So there's only one cemetery that we're actually selling. It. I think it's, a it's appropriate. Don't die. I think it's appropriate, the increase. Yeah. I'm not wild about it, but whatever. It is what it is. <laughs> right. yeah. Okay, so why was there no meeting um, to discuss it? Um, so, so it was brought up that we got to, you know, before we presented this, we should have a, a meeting amongst the committee. Yeah. I asked uh, Tim to call a meeting and he said, no, we'll meet in September and discuss it then. And we can't do that. We have to sort of do this now so that yeah. if, as we services happen throughout the summer, we're not right. losing money each time that happens. Oh. Um, okay. So we, uh, so as a, uh, what are we, a committee and not a commission, yeah. um, it, ultimately those decisions fall on you guys. Yeah. And uh, so here we are. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So here you are. Here I am. <laughs> now we. <laughs> so if, if we're not paying these new approved prices, then we will have to bolster the, the budget. Cover those prices. Cover those costs. In, in particularly the cremation grave only. So currently, right now, right. Uh, uh, James is charging three fifty per grave opening for cremation, and we currently are charging two fifty. So we'd lose a hundred bucks each time that happens. Uh, and if, if they choose to have it on a on a Saturday, uh, he charges extra for that. Uh, right. after, why? Because he works full work week, and that's just how it goes. <laughs> no, no, I said yeah, yeah. I didn't say that. Oh. I, I didn't need that. Oh, okay. I mean, I was just looking. So, so what what we're saying is we're going to be paying him the full price, and we're not going to be able to recoup that right. because our price list is not up to what he's trying. Right. That's right. So the and and honestly, the, these numbers are are behind of others, and so now is a good time to kind of adjust. And... Okay. Well, we certainly don't want to be negative on the whole thing. I guess we're going to have to approve it. Sounds like. Anybody have any thoughts or suggestions with this subject? Mm -hmm. yeah. You're uncomfortable with the, with the size of the increase? It just seems like a lot. Right? Yeah, it's it's awesome. 1400 to 3600 That's over that time. That seems like a big increase. How many four lot graves do you have left? What's How many four lot graves do you have left in it? You know, um, so that's the other thing that's coming down the pipe is we're currently having it surveyed, yeah. um, and there are a fair amount of fair amount there. Yeah. So this should be the last the cemetery for decades, anyways. Mm -hmm. Decades, I would think. Unless it's some run on cemetery lots. Yeah. Right. Yeah, I mean, when you talk about a you know huge increase like this, yeah, you gotta think think about no, it. No, no, you know. Sure. Yeah. And and I think we probably talked about this, but so the the um the thirty six hundred dollars for the for purchasing the uh the cemetery lot that goes into perpetual care. There's a portion of it. I think it's twenty percent goes into perpetual care. Should go into perpetual care. So it'll be more money going to perpetual care, which which should be going to an investment somewhere that will pay back interest and utilize yeah, the interest. It pays the work. Bit. There there is. It should be. Yeah, there's a line that. There is a line that yeah. in, in the budget. Right. Or there, there is a uh, there is a fund. No, there is a fund. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. Set the other funds, and we roll all the funds together. It, and no, get the same well, it should it should have a it should have a code. You don't you can't commingle the cemetery money without. There is 
Yeah, yeah it may with, be in a single with everything else. else. Yeah, yeah it's in a single. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Now. yeah. But on the grave lots, mm -hmm. that's nothing that impacts what our contractors do. That's true. That's true. Right. No, that's that's, that's perpetual care. care. That's money. That's money that generally goes back into the. Some of that goes back. That goes back into the fund to help fund that cemetery into the future. Yeah, yeah. but so it the, does. In some the case. current cost, for instance, on the full burial grave opening, it's eleven hundred, and right. that's going to be the same thing. Right. So right. currently, or last year, let's say. Uh, bring out somebody would come up and dig those graves. Yes. And they charge us eleven hundred dollars and we charge eleven hundred dollars. Yes. So it just makes it a wash. Right. So currently he's charging James charging seven hundred fifty. Right. Seeing we're still getting eleven hundred dollars. So I just kept it. Yeah. Wanna go back. Right, right, right. And then the cremation grave opening, that's when you dig a small hole. Correct. That's what does James get? He he gets three hundred fifty to dig that. Okay. Um, just as a point of reference, Berlin Corner Cemetery charges $795 for a weekday grave opening of ashes. And if you do it on the weekend, on a Saturday, uh, it's an additional 200 Wow. Yep. Huh. And again, they're using these, these, uh, this resource to run the cemetery, to pay the people to do what yeah. needs to be done. Mm -hmm. Right, yeah. Huh. Can I ask a question that I hope isn't a waste of time? What's that? Oh, I'd like to ask a question, but I hope it's not a waste of time because it's not as important. Um, I'm wondering what kind of grace period there might be for the overtime after 3.30, just because I know that even if they have the best of intentions, large groups of people can be slow to move as a mass. I'm not sure. What the... Oh, you mean if there's a... Funeral. Right. So long as he's able to begin his work and get out of the cemetery before 3 30, that's fine. He's not going to charge. Okay. Him. What and what time do the ceremonies like typically start? Typically one o'clock. Yeah. Yeah. And and they're warned. I warn them anyways. We got to be out of the cemetery before 3 30, or there could be overtime and, and you can yeah. usually light some fire. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I guess the biggest, my biggest concern is on the selling the graves for that big an increase. That just seems like a lot. But you're saying that's in line with the other cemetery. Yeah, I, I did have a graph. Um, we well, have Calus Williamstown, Green Mountain, and Berlin. Yep. Yeah. And it's 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 a little bit more than Calus and Williamstown. It's less than than Green Mount. And it's a little less than Berlin. That's well, quite a bit less than Berlin. Berlin is 4,800. Mm -hmm. mm -hmm. I don't know what plane mock gets. I don't know. I, I don't yeah, I'm not sure. Mm -hmm. So four grade watch, 4,800 in Berlin. Huh. I don't know. No one else seems too concerned about it. I mean, how many do we sell a year? How many do we sell a year? Uh, both of, it, it, you know, it's, it's all over the place. I mean, I would say like half, maybe half dozen, maybe half dozen, maybe. Okay. maybe well, that's that a lot. Four grade lots, or are you saying? You just sell different, different purchases. Yeah, you know, different. For a total of six purchases. Yeah. Varying size. Yeah, right. roughly. Right, yeah. right. Yeah. I don't know. It's new territory. I mean, yeah. If you want to reduce this a little bit, you can be more comfortable. Well, I just, I'm not comfortable with, you know, almost tripling some of these costs. And it, it's like a lot. And then it doesn't impact our contract because that has nothing to do with the contract. This is just to do with the town. So the perpetual care. Thing. Yeah, it's not going to hurt anything. All the perpetual care, but. Okay. Would it, would it, would it, it makes, puts less money in our fund, but it's almost it's over doubling our cost. Would it, would it make sense to ladder it a uh, smaller increase now and then a bigger increase in two years or three years? It Is, makes it makes more sense thinking about every aspect of these costs that you do it gradually. You know, it's just like a tax rate. You don't want to go up 
20 cents in one year, you try to go three or four cents a year, make a palatable for you. Well, that's the trouble with this. These probably haven't gone up in 20 years. We well, haven't gone up in 30 uh, years. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, that's, that's, that's another point. Well, no, it's a good it's point like, it's because like, uh, it's because like when WEC doesn't reduce their or some they don't reduce they don't increase their power rates for ten years and you get yeah. a big jump. Well, they make the water wastewater. It's all the same. People and people don't like to raise the rates, but when you do finally raise the rates, you have to raise them a lot to cover your costs, and then people get all upset that's about it. Right, and that's exactly. why you do a little bit at a time. Exactly. So if you want to if you want to cut those back a little bit, you could. You know, this is this is not this is not a sustainable amount of money to come in. Because you're going to run out of lots eventually. Um, well, I don't. Yeah, and, and I'm just saying that you know this this once that ends, then we perpetually take care of right. those cemeteries without any income coming in whatsoever. So your chance to get your income is when you can sell the lots, not not after they're all sold. And and I would argue that it's a pretty desirable place. What's that? It's a pretty desirable place. Yeah. It's better than being on somebody's mantle. It's better than Green Mount, listen to <laughs> Interstate going by, better than yeah. um yeah, lots of places. But that, that, that's, that's a valid point. If these if the rates haven't been raised in 10, 15 years, then it's then it, it should... behooves us to bring it up to competitive market rates rather than what we probably should have been doing on a gradual basis. Look at the crazy cost of things now. Some I know people mowing lawns to some are getting 30 bucks an hour. The guy we just got rid of in Berlin was thirty-two fifty-five an hour. And he's no longer there, of course, but <laughs> for that reason, right? For that reason. Mm. But anyway, um, I don't, I don't, I don't mind. You know, uh, I wouldn't be against shaving some numbers off that. Do make it a little more palatable, right? And then look at it again next year or the that's year what after. Do. Well, if you want to do that, that's fine with me. Yeah. Make a proposal. So get going. So again, I want before you decide yeah. on this, I have one more thing, and that is that you know the, you're putting the onus on the people using that cemetery, not the taxpayers. Not to what? Not the taxpayers. You're putting the, more of the onus on the people using the services of the cemetery, and not necessarily the taxpayers. They may not even live here. I, for That's instance, will never use the cemetery in East Montclair because my lots are in Berlin. Yeah. So my tax dollars is going to fund the cost of, of running the cemetery. You know, I'll never use it. Oh, but you're but the con. So you're saying that there'll be more money going into your budget from selling lots if the place is correct. Yeah, I see what you're saying. Yeah, right. And then the other thing I'll say is my tax rates have consistently gone up for the last twenty five years, and they just have and. Here I'm handing you a revenue stream, and I'm getting pushed back on that. And when they're in the within the market rates, I don't understand it because the increase is so high. I hear so I, I say the same thing when we talk about our budget for next year is that we're looking at six or seven cent tax increase, and I am trying my best to cut our expenses so we're not going to have that big an increase. It's the same with this, though. It's right here. I understand. Understood. So that's what you're doing. It. So you're, but that's, that's what but I'm, I'm in a business myself where somebody doubles the price on me. Yeah. I'm like, what's going on here? Right. And now I, I have And I can tell you what's going on here. The, 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 yeah. the, board, uh, the, uh, the boards of the past just chose yeah. not to raise these rates where they should have been. Exactly. And it'd be also interesting to, to note if we knew how many non-East Montpelier residents were buying these. Mm -hmm. All right. <laughs> you, know, you, know, you don't have a census on that. Well, <clears throat> you know, if all if if ninety percent of the purchases are East Montpelier residents, I mean, might feel you might have a, a a better feeling of not raising the rates as much. I, I, if I would have to guess, I would think it would be close to that, and this is why. Um, up to recently, um, the rules and regulations of the cemetery said you have to have a connection to East Montpelier to be a resident. Or past resume. Do you have any idea when the last time these rates were raised? I don't. I don't. But I would say it's a decade. Probably. Mm -hmm. What do you think, Zoe? I'm listening. Okay. I'm thinking. <laughs> yeah. I, I'd be. I'd be curious to know wh um, what year the what was the last year that the rates were raised. You could figure. Um, let me see if I can. So the document on the website, but I don't know what was changed on the document is the problem. 
it is revised, it says as revised September 4th, 2019. But again, I don't know what was changed on this document. It could have been that the right. prices were not changed at all. There could have yeah. been some other wording yeah. in this that was changed at that time. So. So cremation lots are keeping where they are. The only things we're really discussing are the four grave lots and the two grave lots. I mean, what if we just double them for this year? That doesn't seem unreasonable. Put on the end, put it on the agenda That's for this time next year. What's that? I have the same document she has. It's oh, yeah. Making. But again, I don't know what we're right, paying right. on it, So I mean, I'd rather just say we double it. You're talking about the, the grave <laughs> lot. Yeah, costs. Four, four grave lots. The fourteen hundred right now. If we go to twenty eight hundred, that's a hundred percent increase. If we go to two grave lots, sixteen hundred, that's almost the eighteen hundred. But at least it's palatable more. I mean, I would think it'd be more palatable, but I guess. It's not that big a point. We don't have to thrash this to death anymore. It's only a few hundred dollars probably in a year. And if you think about six transactions, it's, if you multiply it out, it's not that much money. So I guess if I have no support with that, I could go along with any other. If I if I could want to tweak it, which I'd like to, I would just double it. So there you go. And we can review it next year and pay. Hey, so, so are you going to make a motion? I'm not making a motion. I'm not really supposed to make motions. <laughs> but if no, if I have no support on that, I'll go along with your proposal. And I'm not hearing much comment, ex except I don't have any support. <laughs> 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 and I don't really care that much. <laughs> so it's not going to impact the tax rate very much. <laughs> no, but it's, you know, it's, yeah. it's, it's money. Yeah. It's money. I just I understand. think about um, a, a citizen in East Montpelier that goes to buy a four grave lot. He's going to say, well, last year was 1400 now it's 3600 What did you do? Well, there you go. I'll make the motion. Let's see where the vote is. I'll make a motion to increase the current lot purchase cost doubling to four, for four and uh, two. Uh, grave lots with the um, provisal of reviewing them, reviewing the rates and putting it on the agenda year from, and, and you know. 20 year hands. Yep. So you want, you're saying 2,800 and 1,600. Let's see if we have a second. Would you say so? I'll second it. All in favor, please say aye. 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 <laughs> <laughs> we have two eyes. <laughs> yeah, we have two eyes. That's we have no way myself for the board. That's all right. I'll, I'll vote for it. Okay. All right, I'll vote against it. Okay, we have three voting for it and one vote against it. I'm going to be the one that votes against everything here. <laughs> Somebody's got it. Okay. That's okay. All right. Okay. 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 So, are we done with that? I think so. Okay. All right. Well, thank, you know what? We appreciate. Oh, yeah, for me. Yes. Yeah, I'm sorry that um I didn't that I discussed this at, at length so much. Oh, no, it's good to discuss it. Yeah, we do. Yeah, we do. yeah. yeah. No, no. I did. I really appreciate it. It's yeah. good too. But thank you. Yeah, you bet. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not trying to be negative about that. Oh, I know. Yeah, I know. This is kind of right. We'll have the facts and figures for next year. Next, maybe next year we'll double it again. There you go. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> uh, town Treasury report. Uh, this is the main report. Nothing incredibly exciting. I mean, we're coming into year end, so we have yeah. a little bit more discussion on some of those okay. items later. So next, where are we at? Where are we at? So, if you want to know where we think we are going from an end of the year perspective, the yeah. next agenda item is consideration of the fiscal year end fund balances. Really, with this, you're looking at if we are designating any funds specifically or funds specifically to be classified as a specific fund yeah. um, for balance purposes. So last year, we cleared some uh, funds that we had set up specifically related to the town office transition. We still have $10,000 
in the treasurer transition fund that seems like we could release at this point. We are well beyond that. We were still in the midst of the transition last fiscal year, which is why we, why the select board decided to retain this, this $10,000. So the one item I'm proposing is that we release that $10,000 back to the general fund. Mm -hmm. And um, from a general fund perspective, based on where we are now and costs that will be incurred between now and the end of June, um, we are kind of eyeing a break even. Um, but keep in mind that break even is really happening because we had $176,000 almost $177,000 of ARPA funds that were essentially recorded as a revenue in our general fund. That which, might have been short. Otherwise, we would have been short. So we called that, that was connected to salary and benefits costs um, for the staff transition. So some of those costs were in fact incurred in the prior fiscal year um, as, yeah, as well. Some were the majority yeah. of which were this fiscal year. Um, so it's helped offset. I pointed out a few things here, and I'm going to be continuing to pour over the numbers, but um, we obviously know we had higher salaries in fiscal 23 than was budgeted to the tune of around 18000 um, Lister payroll costs are higher this year. I have 6000 here right now. That's what they're at now, but that does not include what the time may be right. for the next payroll. Um, this last payroll, they were way ahead of their budget with nearly 102 hours against yeah. for a pay period compared to a budget of about 46 hours, 23 a pay period. Yeah. So I'm not sure where their numbers will end. Yeah. Um, but right now we're at 6,000. Um, 36,000 health insurance costs, which we know was twofold. One was a 20% increase in the rates and then also a change in the balance. Right. So the budget was based on kind of the balance of elections that empl that employees had made in fiscal 22, but we had a new group of employees in fiscal 23, some of which did not take insurance, now positions that were taking insurance. So that's kind of the, the reason for the twofold in the, in the change in health insurance. Um, roadside management expense. So we have the Emerald Ash Borer Project, um, which was 17,000 over, we budget 15, but it was just over 30. Yeah. And then basically I'm continuing to review the cost, but these are the big items. Um, right now, highway is trending under budget. So, you know, he's helping um, cover some yeah. of these overages, but. Let's see what we wind up. Yeah. Majority of the costs are in. We shouldn't have too many outside of payroll, yeah. too many more large expenses posed. So, but that's something Michelle and I both are kind of pouring over right now as bills come in where they go this fiscal year or next, because some of them are actually for next fiscal year at this point. And we always put, we always had had extra money that we put into the next year's budget and that got used. So it was like 50 or a hundred thousand or something. And for we have 22, yeah, we've had, mm -hmm. and sometimes we haven't even used it, but this year we did. Yeah. Yeah. The budget's a lot tighter than it has been in at least yeah. a recent we past. We only increase the costs. Yeah. You couldn't keep up with it, really. In the well, the health. And the health insurance. Like, budget it. And health insurance, I so I I mentioned to Chair Gardner was when he was in the office last week that one of the things that I will be doing is reforecasting, in particular sal salaries expense for fiscal twenty four. Yeah. We know now who is here. Um, there's a slightly different mix now in some elections and what were budgeted at that time. So I think it's prudent to see where I estimate the numbers if the world stays as it is today. Yeah understanding that anyone could choose to leave at any point in time and, and change the dynamic. But if, if we continue as we were today, as we are today, what will salaries and benefits look like for fiscal 24? Um, if I trend the numbers and obviously part of our discussion later with pay rates will also affect that, that as well. So once I get all these pieces and parts, um, I have seen, I believe it was a 13% increase that health insurance is going up. I think I assume three in the budget. 
um, on top of 20 from last year. Mm -hmm. I was surprised. I kind of expected this year to be a little bit flatter given the large increase last year, but it looks like we're still. So I want to roll that in, but we have some other changes that have occurred in yeah. employee elections that I, th I think that's going to kind of be fine yeah. as we go. So that is something I will do because as as uh, members of the select board know that have been around, we will be calculating the tax rate here pretty soon. Yeah, yeah. So that's the reason I want to reforecast where we think. We know we have a budget, but the budget was based on a certain set of assumptions. Now we yeah. know the world as it is today. Let's trend it forward, see where we think we're going to be, yeah. and let's set the tax rate potentially if the select board wants based on maybe some revised figures from the budget if we have something that makes sense. That yeah, we need it all on the screen. So. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You will see a preliminary calculation at your next meeting. In the okay. Morning. Well, we'll deal with that when we get there. And if the board would like to release that ten thousand dollars treasurer transition fund and re put that back to the general fund, that yeah. we can do that now. Yes, that would need a motion. Yeah, yeah. We'll make a motion that we release the ten thousand dollar uh, ten thousand dollars remaining in the treasurer transition fund um, back to the general fund. I will second that. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 The yeah, ayes appear to have it, they do have it. So is that your the treasury report? Is that the end? Is that yes. Um, consideration of fiscal year and fund balances. Is that the same subject? Or is that? Mm -hmm. I, that's what we just went over. Oh, okay. So that item is done. Yes. The next thing is Mr. Hess. Mm -hmm. Investment. Investment of. Oh, whoops. Look at that. that. Is that correct? No. That's a new word. No, I have a new word I made up. <laughs> investment. I, 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 I just don't want to get chastised by announcing the word. Right? So I'm going to sound it out. Investment of town funds. <laughs> <laughs> Yep, I think I pronounced it correctly. Yeah. And discuss town funds invest. Oh, this is another word: investment <laughs> strategy. Review town investment policy. Okay. Oh, right there. What's that? I said it's called right there. Yeah. Well, we have a new word in the beginning, but that's fine. I'm trying to be creative here. Yeah. Okay. Would you like me to? Uh... Take it away. Sure. Okay. At the last meeting, um, it was mentioned that we are going to we would the uh, I, um, Gina Michelle, would like to meet with our bank to discuss um, potentially um, increasing um, the rate of interest or increasing the funds that we were getting. Uh, on our uh, on our cash balance, we um, I went to the VLCT. You have um, you have that in front of you, and I had a correspondence with a Megan starts with an S. Anyway, you have the investment policy from the Vermont League of Cities and Towns in front of you, and um, the, what we are contemplating. If you look on page six. We are well within, um, we are actually being more conservative. On the top, it says the following investments will be permitted, will be permitted under this policy. And it lists nine different, well, nine different um, investment vehicles that they recommend. That's on page six. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We're, we're going to be, Michelle and I, Gina um, has a prior a prior appointment. Uh, we'll be sitting down with two individuals from Northfield Savings Bank to um, to review what we can invest in. So we are within both our East Montpelier um, financial investment policy, which is on the page on the page before this document, and we are not looking. We are. I'm contemplating um, potentially just number one um, and CDs, but probably one and three. 
not looking at government agency paper, but that would be fine too, like Ginny Mays. And we're not looking at commercial paper, repurchase agreements, money market funds even. Um, but they are all within the recommendation of both. We are, we are in compliance with the league and with our own policy. Okay. Carl had wanted some investigative and I investigated. Okay. So, so then we were looking for if there is. Sorry? You're going to have a meeting? We have a meeting at 2 30 tomorrow okay. afternoon. Yeah. Um, I don't think we, we don't need a, a vote on this, but if you um, if there's any objections, comments, or otherwise, um, I think it would behoove us to just go forward with potential I mean, you know, treasury bills are are more secure than a CD because well, it will be above the $250,000 limit. Um, so there's How no much money do we have? That is well, there's millions. We're, we're, um, Michelle has a cash flow, and Gina put a cash flow of what our needs. We're talking about initially very short-term investments. I mean, we can take potentially a million dollars and put it out for one month. This is a 5%. This is real. What are we getting on a million dollars now? Um, it, it's, it's, actually list, it's actually listed in the document um, that we just looked at. Uh, I mean, our, right, our yeah. treasury report. Yeah, I mean, you look at the um, kind of East Montpelier accounts. Yeah, yeah. That first one, I think you have it right on top. I have that. Right there. If you look on the right hand column. Yeah. Um, so, in my opinion, it's a little scary that we have under special accounts. It looks like we're earning nothing on two point zero three nine million dollars. Um, the rates that you see on the right are that's what we're getting. Yeah, some none. So some general savings. You're getting thirty basis points. 30, yeah, point three percent. Yeah, I mean that's only but on the <clears throat> Northfield Savings Bank we're getting six tenths of a percent yeah so we're obviously when you invest in treasury bills not through the government but you invest when you invest them through um a brokerage firm they're liquid enough that you could sell if you if you found and if you have a let's say you have a six month cd a six month treasury bill <clears throat> normally when you have a treasury direct account you have to wait for six months and then it gets yeah, yeah. but this is um this is liquid enough that if you bought it today, the broker could sell it tomorrow and you would get that tiny little bit of interest. Right. Now, if the market changes radically and interest went go from 5% to 10%, you would not get that money back because the price of a bond goes inversely. But if it's a one month bill, you just have to wait the one month and then you get your full principal. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you understand how bonds work inversely. Yeah, inverse, right. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Well, that's good. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Right. We're talking about very liquid, very short-term paper. We're not going out two years. We're not even going to probably go out a year. Um, and we're going to see what the CD rates. But the far right column should um, should change radically. I mean, the, right. just think on 5% on a million dollars is $50,000. And we don't yeah. have to pay taxes on it. Because we're a nonprofit. That's been a year, though. Over well, here, when I'm talking about yeah. Yeah. when you talk about interest rates, it's five percent. Right. If it's a one month T bill at five percent, yeah. that's per annual. Yeah, yeah. Huh. Well, and if there's no objections, no, um, I have no objections on a conservative cash flow and term basis. We would like to go forward with a program, so, and you'll so, be able to see all listed. So what you're talking about is real money. And when you're talking about doubling and tripling graves for people, that's not real money. That's a couple thousand bucks. This is real money. That's come change compared to the right. And as I and as I've been conversation conversations with Gina, these are salaries we're talking about. Yeah, I know. This would pay for sa potential salaries. So we should keep pursuing it. No, no harm, no foul. Okay. Sounds good to me. We'll report back. I'll report yeah. back. And we'll report back. Yeah. Next meeting. Mm -hmm. Um. So the next item is town clerk reports.
Hi, Rosie. Annual reporting on records management and records retention. You have the floor. You're, you're, on, you're, you're on mute, Rosie. In 2018, the select board approved a records management policy and an, an attached retention schedule. And we have been destroying or recycling or retaining documents pursuant to that schedule for those last five years. Um, this year, I gave you a written report so that I don't take up a lot of your time tonight. Um, but essentially, where there may be a couple of changes, um, next year should be the will be the year of larger changes. So I'm going to hold everything until next year and have you folks take a peek at those changes now as we anticipate a lot more retention records schedules coming down the pike now that COVID is over per se. Um, the one thing that we talked about last year that I did not do was we were discussing checks in the vault checks that have been, um, that are from our customers that have been scanned and cleared into, from our system. Um, Treasurer Don Welch felt that we shouldn't keep them for more than six months. A discussion with the select board suggested uh, no more than a week because of possible liability of people's account information. Um, when I went back to talk with uh, Michelle, the treasurer, she wasn't real, real comfortable with that, not knowing what our cash flow situation was or what the processes were around tax time. So rather than bringing that back for a vote the next month, um, I didn't um, so that Michelle could gain a better handle on the way the processes work. Um, so at this point, we have well over six months worth of cleared checks in the vault. They are not any place where anyone can actually access them. And there's very limited um, access to those to those documents. So I'm comfortable right now with where they are. But I did want to let you know that that was something that did not get the follow up that you had requested, because Michelle and I made a determination that for the good of the town, uh, we wanted to hold off on that. So right now you're keeping the checks for over six months. The right clear now. checks. Yes. And and how long are you gonna keep them? Um, we are keeping them for six months at a time right now until next year when I come back to you with a new recommendation um, regarding a different retention schedule. There are some towns that keep them for three years. Really? Yeah, because they feel like it, they need to keep it for as long as their audit. Oh, okay. So all the checks scanned and in, in the bank, we can just access it like like we all have. Yeah. Yes. Why do you have to hold on to the physical copy? Isn't it in the? Bank? I'm not sure that we actually have copies of the actual scan check. We, we have, have the we have the, actual, we have the original check. Yeah. If I yeah. if I pay no. my taxes with a check, which I do, you still have that check. It went Correct. to the bank and it came back. Oh, the or bank gave you back physical check? Or you just scan no, it. Scanned it in. You scanned it. Yeah. Oh, you're scanning it. Scan with the New deposit. So yeah. you're yeah. physically for the bank. That's why you. Not unless we have to. Some checks won't scan. Right. Yeah. Huh. Hmm. Okay. I guess there's some <laughs> argument to be said that we could we should keep them for a while, is what you're saying. <laughs> The reason that we were keeping them for a while was so that um, if there was a question about somebody's payment that Michelle right. would be able to go back and, and check yeah. to see. Yeah. We have I mean, had I... to do that only once, but it was probably three months back instead of six months back. Yeah. You scan the check, but the bank does not have a scanned copy of it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. And then you have to hold on to it for as long as that. Yeah, right. There's no the bank doesn't have it. Right. When I scan a check from my phone, yeah, an image. It's I have the image. If you don't have an image, then you have to hold on to it as long as maybe. Well, you trust the record of the money coming out of your account. Of course. Yeah. So they have you have that record. 
that was paid to you while put or say your taxes. Yeah, the person giving us the check really yes. Yes. should have a copy of right. that cash check and then you get in their receipt. banking institution. You get yeah. I always get a receipt. Is there is there ever been an instance where you've needed to retrieve that check that you that you're holding on to? Three months, you said that. No, no it just retrieved one. There has that been, last week there that there was a question, and Michelle did go pull the check yeah, because nice. someone wrote that the dollar, the the numbers that they wrote on the check was five cents off from the letters in which they wrote out. Right, so, so it was sent. So it was still in technically number and number, but for some reason that the numbers, it was five cents. So yeah, it was not a big matter, deal, matter, yeah. but she wanted to see yeah. the bank reported something and she wanted to see the actual right. physical check. And so because we have that, she didn't see that for a while. No doubt. Okay. So you... So we're just holding on to it for the six months or three years? Six months know. at this point. Okay. Okay. We're saying for three years after the audit. Yeah, but the audit happens after the six months. Does it not? The, the checks will the, be gone. When I think audit. the audit reference is really more about uh, what other towns may do. I don't know that yeah. that's really been a part of our determination. Okay. That's, that's correct. Months. Months. Okay. okay. Great. Anything else? Um, just that if you want to see what records we've we've gotten rid of, uh, there are uh, sheets that have a description of those records and the yes. statute that allows us to get rid of them. Available for public viewing in the town clerk's office. Okay. See, the, what you've got written here is not actually what's happening, right? The consensus of the board was to change the retention period from three years to one week, given that bank patrons have easy access to electronic copies of their clear checks. Right. That's what you discussed last year. And yes. also in the minutes, you didn't vote it that night. No. It said it agreed to hold off on this change. Right. So we didn't bring, we didn't make the change and we're not going to. Because it's one week. <laughs> one week doesn't line up with six months. Right? That was a change that was suggested. It was one week. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That's what it says right here. Right. So it did not get changed. So we're going to just move forward with what you've been doing. Correct. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Anything else? Not for me. If you have questions, let me know. I don't have any of you. Does anybody else have any? No, or Rosie? Thank, thank you, Rosie. Well, okay. Okay. thank you. Okay, the next item consideration of quote to replace town office network server. This was, oh, this is just a server. This isn't the this is just a the server. screening so thing. This is something we've discussed <laughs> yes. at, when we discussed ARBA funds that. Right. Servers last on average about four years. This yeah. one was installed in July of 2019. So yeah. we're inherently upon the time when it needs to be replaced. Unfortunately, this type, this item is not in the capital plan. So its yeah. replacement is kind of un unbudgeted anywhere. So ARPA gives us a great opportunity to improve our IT security, utilizing ARPA funds, replace the server with a more updated server. Um, to the tune of twenty three thousand cool. dollars. Um, I have not had detailed conversations yet with RB Tech because we just haven't managed to connect about the the quote. Um, you know, this quote we've only received one quote, as you all know. RB Tech performs all of our IT resources. We don't typically go in RFP items yeah. like this yeah. simply because that can complicate the relationship um, that we have. And it would be difficult for RB Tech to service something that they did not install. So, um, And this does not include the, what we talked about, the update. So whatever. what Chair Gardner is referring to is we had a situation where an employee clicked mm -hmm. on a link on Friday and um, we unfortunately, luckily nothing 
overly negative occurred. I actually received the same email as well. It was an email that was, I think, going around in a lot of circles in Vermont on Friday. Mm -hmm. So according to RB Tech, we were not the only one of their clients. I believe there were two others that also um, ended up with someone clicking on this link. It happens. Um, so I had spoken with Ruben, who uh, runs RB Tech uh, months ago about cyber, because I, I get I get someone trying to scam us for money on almost a daily basis to get me to click on click on something in my email and ask him if it was anything we could do. So I didn't bring you that quote yet because I haven't talked to him. So he did send me uh, some information because there's it's kind of twofold. One, it includes cyber training for all of the staff um, so that they can be brought up to speed on what to look for to hopefully avoid this in the future. In addition to kind of something that overlays with our email so the way he explained it to me before, and I need to speak with him again about it based on this quote I just received today, is if someone does click on something in an email, it goes through something first before it takes you there to then tell you, uh, I don't think you want to click so on that. Yeah. yeah. So um, unfortunately, these are just the way of the world. And I'm sure yeah. any, everybody's seeing it in their personal yeah. email. Yeah. So, um, so yeah, this does not include that. This is truly just to yeah. replace the, the server. Yeah. Uh, what was that? It's on the overall process, not on the. Oh, so on the filter that you were talking about, would that be a good thing to do at that time? They're not necessarily connected, but oh, okay. it was a quote I was going to, yeah. once I have some yeah. conversations with RB Tech and yeah. understand better what, what okay. this service is that I would right. bring to you at a future yeah. select board yeah. meeting. Okay. You had a question? I do. Um, as much as we love and trust our fellow local resident, and you know what I'm going to ask, what's the re do we have any reference on if these are remotely competitive in the ballpark or three times what they normally should cost? You know, I'm, I'm exaggerating. I'm, you know what I'm coming from. Yeah, I'm exaggerating. Don't only right. because the only uh, resource that I have, they use significantly more equipment than we would possibly need. Um, so I don't know. Um, I my best. my contacts, they have server rooms um, that are full full of. Actually, a lot of people are doing offsite servers now. They're not even hosting them anymore. Yeah. Which yeah, which I actually considered asking RB Tech about um, if that was an option because. So if you did not want to do this tonight, that would just leave it open for me to have that have that conversation. Um, this was something that I actually was discussing with someone this weekend after I had done the agenda, um, that there are some options to do cloud hosting for your servers. It's a server, mm -hmm. it's a server and a cloud. And it's a server and a Microsoft network. We are. Point, which is yeah, so, yeah. But you'll... There's some complication with us with SharePoint because of Nemric, the financial system that we use, it can't operate. It has to operate. I, I asked this question when I first got here because I'm a huge Microsoft 365 fan, um, that Nemric has to be hosted on a physical server. So I think that may be our barrier to doing this because the system operates on such old school technology. It doesn't really align very well with modern ways of cloud hosting. So um, I would love to be able to cloud host only because our server resides in our basement. And while it is up off the floor, yeah. to me, not the greatest location right. outside of it being cool, yeah. not the greatest spot for your server. So um, so if you want me to do a little bit of digging with RB Tech to discuss yeah. if there were any cloud options, I would be happy to do that. That works for you. That's fine with me. Sure they would rather not. <laughs> who knows what? Yeah, like i said they were very receptive when i asked them about microsoft 365 when i first came here um it just really is because nemric is truly a, yeah. operating on very old platforms that it's it doesn't line up no okay okay so we'll do it. we'll hold on this for now we'll get it to each other. sounds good um so the next item is appointments Consideration of annual charter-based appointments. It's got <coughs> acting zone administrator open position. So I see we have a page of, or two. You have. Mm -hmm. Or three. So some awesome. items to note here that are not really renewals or just things to point out um, is 
that Patricia Canada, who joined the town office last Monday, is on here for uh, assistant town clerk and assistant town treasurer. Um, there's technically kind of two appointments that we're doing for her. One will appoint her from essentially now through June 30th, and then a renewal of that appointment starting on July 1st. Um, and that's really just so that she can actively engage. Uh, Rosie's also on vacation the last week of June. So yeah. it actually would give Patricia the ability to act in yeah. a town clerk capacity if needed. Right. right. Uh, James Mangan is listed as a cemetery sexton based on the new contract that we have with him. Yeah. Uh, Pam Byron submitted her name to join the cemetery committee um, in, a, in the seat that was recently vacated by Elliot Morse. Yeah. And then I recently found out, Rosie let me know that Alice, Alice Smith had passed away. So that would open a seat on the East Montpelier Village Committee. And then the only other piece I, I also gave the select board some information on is we do have to officially report to the state if we are, if the select board is once again reappointing um, Ty Roland as our fire warden. Is there any reason not to? It seems like he's willing to do it. Yes, he is willing to do it. Yeah. Yes. I spoke with him as well. I mean, he's pretty well qualified. Some people push back. He's kind of a little too over the top. How's that? Oh, you know, won't let you burn a stomp and that type of thing. Won't let you burn a stomp? Yeah, yeah, he's big on that type of thing. He, I mean, I got a copy of the statue because I was trying to mitigate the situation, and you know, he was right. But so the statue says you can't burn stone. Well, it might burn underground. I don't know what the reasoning is, but oh. I think you can get away with a little bit like that. But this guy wanted to burn a fair amount, and I was not having anything of it. So eventually, I told the guy, "Tuck him to my farm." I would. Deal with it for him. You know, it's just Ty is very black and white. Yeah. Very black and white. But you don't really have anybody else. I can tell you that right now. And uh, so I would say that he'd probably be the best choice, even though. Yeah. Even though. You know. Bad enough. Not yeah, okay. Fair. Good enough. <laughs> It'll be in paper tomorrow. Whoops. Well, it's not. You, you just said some very obvious things. Yeah. But, you know, it's, it's what it is. I just put my fire ring around the stump and. <laughs> well, you, you know, if you're a landowner, you're probably supposed to have a permit for that. Did you get one? No, I didn't. I said I would. I mean, yeah. I said I would burn. I just put my yeah, fire you, ring. I know. I, I would do that. that. Would I, I get a permit know. for it? I don't no. know. Everybody, people have fires on. Friday and Saturday nights all the time around you, especially Not near my neighborhood. So it doesn't nobody ask for a permit there. No, you're you're probably okay. But I'm, and I do the same thing. Like if I have a pile of scrap, I'm tempted to burn that in a small fire. There you go. But that's not. But but you'll find out that that this may is, not work. This is a conversation with. Yeah. It's, we're, everything's being recorded right now. It's, yeah. I thought was I would I, I, I this conversation later. Right so it's not like we're letting we're not letting any secrets out. No, we're not. <laughs> we're just talking about what, what people do. Yeah. In general. Yeah. Okay, good. Sometimes yeah. there's you don't need it. Sometimes they fall back. Not at all. Okay. <laughs> it's it's recorded. <laughs> it's all good. Okay. It's all good. I, I don't disagree with it. So but and as it relates to acting voter administrator, um, I did speak with someone who may be interested in the position, but one thing I'm a little confused about, and partly because I don't know that the acting zoning administrator has actually really been called upon before, is we do have an hourly rate in our pay structure for the acting zoning administrator. Yeah. Is that what's the intent that that would be an hourly paid position if that person were called upon? Again, I don't have any actual- Is the, is the current zoning administrator hourly paid? He's technically on a salary. Oh, well, this would probably be hourly paid because they wouldn't expect him to, this person to use as many hours and it would only be temporary. Yeah. Okay. So, yeah, so it was paid. Okay. So yeah. it is, okay. I just wanted to confirm that because yeah. I don't really know so of any history. The one that actually did, did had to come in. Okay. Yeah. Okay. If someone's on vacation. The, the person okay. would come in. Perfect. Good to know. Okay. Now, who'd you get? 
Well, I'm not going to say his name in case I don't know. He's not sure if it's if it is a paid. He he would need to speak with his employer because some employers have you cannot have a second job, and the fact that it's paid could be a challenge. So, okay, okay. That's why I wanted to get that. I mean, the other thing they can do is reach out to somebody on the thing. I have. That's, yeah. yeah. It's, it's, no. Yeah. No, they don't. But they, they are in a position to actually know what some of the regulations are. That's all. I'm this person actually does have a background in it. Oh, okay. So they're not on the planning commission, but. All right. So I will speak with that particular okay. person. and. We will go from there. I mean, if they just want to do it for free, and the employer they have now has a problem with them getting reimbursed for something else that they're doing, you can just do it for free. Huh, I will discuss that. Yeah. So, okay. what do you need us to do here with all the appointments? So, uh, approve the slate of appointees? Of yeah, appointees. typically you approve the sheet as presented if you are comfortable with. Like we've discussed essentially the only that we're not assuming you are comfortable with Pam Byron being appointed, Patricia. James, and I only mentioned Ty just because I, I, Rosie had given me this information she received from the state that we do have to have a special officially state. respond to them and let them know that yes, Ty was reappointed. And they were support, and they were really supportive too. But it seems, seems oh, like, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. But he does a good job. Well, he's definitely uh, abides by the statute. Definitely. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Is there conscious um for committing the law to do it? Not at all. I haven't burned anything. Oh, I'll make I'll make a motion to uh <laughs> to accept these these uh, appointments. Okay. A second Wait. This is always <laughs> <laughs> yeah, funny. How about you? <laughs> Uh, we have a second. <laughs> <laughs> getting Any more discussion? Is it, is, Any more discussion? Is, is, is it stuff one and stuff two and stuff one and stuff two? All of the favor, please say aye. 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 Yeah, I appear to have the two have. Uh, so access permit. New curb cut, Corbin Road. This is adjacent to the property of 550 Coburn Road. Um, Guthrie did go and look at the request. Does need a culvert. However, he said it's actually to the town's benefit to put this curb cut in and add a culvert. Okay. So it's some it's a place that he's actually wanted a culvert, but really hasn't had a good way to get one in there. So he's actually going to speak with the landowner because he will probably put this culvert in um, to ensure just proper. proper drainage and and to help with the drainage on the road in general. Mm -hmm. So I'm Colbert them? Yeah. yeah. Therefore, do we have any idea what the expenses would be to the town? Oh, oh right. it's just, it's just within the budget. Yeah, this is whatever. a small, yeah. Okay. This, this, he would fit this in basically to his kind of normal annual okay. Colbert. It's small Colbert, yeah, these are little. That's right. It's not a it's not it's not these are the little it's Colberts. Not it's, 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 it's not a it's the taxpayers' money that we're responsible it is, for. There's no such thing as chunk it's change. It's very be small change, <laughs> not chunk <laughs> change. I'll make a motion to accept or approve the curb cut for you. Two three dash zero two zero. Awesome. We have a second on that. Sure. Okay. I second that. Zoe's the curb cut Any, expert. Now. Oh, very good. Any further discussion on the curb cut? All those in favor, please say aye. 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 to have it. Do have it. Ah, let's see. Consideration potential of FY 2024 employee pay rates, potential executive session. And following that, we have a personal matter, potential executive session. Um, what do you want to do? We should go in executive session in bar what? I was gonna ask if before we went into executive session, if you wanted to go ahead and look at the second, the right of way permit that you have. 
So that's right. The let's clear the um addition to the agenda. We have two things. Um, what were they? One is the right of way. And the other was oh, the are the garage thing. Yes. Well, let's do those. Yes. Okay. So the um the item is discuss potential RFP to seek a consultant to assist in the preparation of the design request for a new town garage. The purpose of an RFP of this nature would be to seek a person or firm that can develop a bid package to design the project requirements, standards, deliverables, and options for a new town garage. The product of this RFP would be a thoroughly designed RFP it can be used for a second RFP to hire an architect or engineer to develop a full design of a new town garage that would include a siting of the new count new garage, all necessary permits for the project, and a full building designer can be then taking the bid. So where I got this is I've been pulled in a few different directions as it, as it relates to trying to scope what we seek for a new town garage. Yeah. Proper project requirements and scoping of what you're looking for is going to get us in the right direction to get a design. So putting something together, you know, the RFP typically reads more than, hi, come design a new town garage for us. Oh. Um so I happened to see, I was researching um, other RFPs for town garages and happened to see where Brookfield, Vermont, had actually done something like this, where they actually asked if somebody could help draft a well put together RFP that could go to a, a design firm to then design mm -hmm. the project. Because there's going to be a lot of questions when we start outlining this. Mm -hmm. um, so... That's what I wanted to, I'm just trying to figure out how to move this forward, but I just don't have an incredible amount of time right now to dedicate to defining project requirements, running it by energy committee and all various stakeholders to then attempt to get an RFP put together. Yeah, did Connor ever get back to you on what the other towns are done? He sent something that this afternoon, but oh. I mean, it's essentially, if you look at what people put out, it's. This is what we want to build. This is where we want to put it. This yeah. is what we want in it. These are the things yeah. we want considered. That's what we're talking about. Yeah. Right now, we have Newtown Garage and a rough a rough guesstimate on size, but that doesn't necessarily, you're going to need more to do an actual RFP. I guess. I mean, I thought that in a general RFP that we could write up, we would then engage the firm that would do all that. No. Because looking for somebody that's going to do the whole thing, the whole design. You want to design and build firm. Yeah. And Connor can do it, but we, we can't just go for a local firm. We have to go to, you know, we have to put it out in a competitive process. Yeah. And you may yeah. get some proposals, you may not get a lot. Right. We may not, exactly. But we uh, we have to do our due diligence and put it out to bid. But you're saying that we need someone to design the actual well, document. Put we put on it would be not a two second. It's right. not a two sentence document. Yeah, so that's my point. If you when you read these, it's in, and that's what I mean. It's very tough. Then how do you compare the bids? Typically, when you're doing yeah. this, yeah. you have something very clearly defined yeah. that you are asking of this. Yeah. What we're yeah. what you're talking about is something very high level. Yeah. So what we could get from Connor versus really what we could get from right. Longinus versus what we right. could get from someone I don't even right. know the name of yeah. could be drastically different yeah. because, on yeah. what they're envisioning that you need as a building. Have a scope of service so would you do an hydrant on your building? That's what I mean. You mean that one we built? The, the, yeah. They said, hey, we have a town manager. We don't need to hire an engineer. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So, that's, so uh, we ended up building it, uh, having Lodge and S design build. Yeah. It's, it's but like, did you put that out a bit? No. Um, yeah, we did. We we got yeah, maybe a couple people. That was it. Nobody yeah. really was that interested in it because there wasn't big enough amount of money. Oh. And um, we built it. It was dirt cheap. Yeah. I know you. Like a, I think it was like I think it was like one hundred fifty thousand dollars or something like that back a few years ago. When yeah. things are cheaper. Yeah. But it's not a town. It's not a regular town. Right. It's, it's a more storage. Yeah. Yeah. 
Yeah, so it's a little bit different. It is, but it's insulated and everything. But the work, it, but you know, you, I, I would think that that an architect, you would say, look, we want to build down garage. We've got six trucks that are going to go in there. Yeah. We have six staff. We want to have an office space. We want to have a, a tool storage area. Yeah. Um, can somebody throw that together for us? Can can and then that would be like your what you're looking for in general. And then then when they come and meet with you, they'll ask a lot more questions. But you know, then that's kind of my point. How do you compare bids, though? Because you, oh, I know, it's not the way that's hiring someone. That's not when you're no. bidding out. Typically, it's. I mean, the document we put forward for Emerald Ash Borer to to bid that project is significantly longer yeah. than what we're discussing putting out for the the town garage. I used to use what I used to use in at VTrans is always hiring somebody to either do architectural services bridges, highways, all that stuff. And they have to rank all the proposals that come in. And um, I just got a ranking form from them and just filled it out with the main with the main issues that we needed to be addressed in our or in our building. Right. And sent it out. And then you know you want somebody with certain level of experience. There's, there's a whole list of things and you then you rank those. Um, you have them yeah. you uh, you add you assign numbers to things that are the most important and the least important, and then you just see how they hit it. Then you add them up. And right. But I think in the long run, if you're only going to get like two two bidders, you, you're going to be able to figure it out pretty fast. We just did that for architectural services and engineering for a new uh, central mall solid waste district building yeah. that they're going to build. And we got, we got one architect, clearly architect, one engineer, and then, and then a company that came in, Weston and Samson, that came in, with both architectural services, but they teamed up with one and, and an engineering services. We ended up out of those. So you got, you know, you got three bids. And we took the, we ended up taking the bid on the one, we didn't make a big deal out of it. We took the one that that provided the dual services because they were able to bundle things together. And in the long run, it was less money than what it was going to cost to hire the little ones separately. But that's just how you turn around and do it. We didn't, we didn't get into a big ranking situation because we didn't have that many people. That's in the center of the law. Yeah, and we looked also, the things that we looked at, though, and, and you're right, because you, sometimes you need a list of things, and we have done that in the past, is you look at, you know, what do they have for experience in building municipal buildings? Yeah. How much experience do they have in Vermont? Yeah. Um, have they, how many municipalities do they work for? Um, and then, you know, that stuff starts clearing, clearing yeah. it out for you really easily. If you want to hire somebody who's done work in Vermont, northern Vermont, how many people have been involved in a wet environment and building yeah. and stuff like that? Those are all just things you have to sit down and throw together. And you got that from VTrans or something? Well, that's what VTrans has on it. No, but we didn't use that for Central Vermont no. Solid Waste Management District because... So they, they already put out an RFP? They put out an RFP and got and, and ended up... We just got... I told you, we just got like three yeah. beds. Yeah, yeah. So, so, so it was easy. So some of these companies... Sounds like all these companies may have already done these to different scale... And say, look, this is kind of what we're looking for. Show us what this town or this town, and give us an idea. Right? You're not trying. You're not. Get your experience. This is not going to be a unique project. This is going to be a garage with the accoutrements that you mentioned. Right. I mean, I talked to and the size. About it and they're, they're building these things all. They built. They're right. building one right now. Right. They're building another one. So last they, year. They, they built one for Milton. They're building one for blah blah. I know it's okay. So maybe it's more. They've got the experience, so, but we can't just go hire. It is, but that's no, no, I understand. They can't write the RFP for us. Yeah. To send it out to bid. What he's yeah. talking about is going to a specific company, no, and then they scope it out. So that's the challenge. The challenge is we have to put something out there that people can put, give us some sort of bid for. So it's least competitive. Yeah, 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 of course. That, that's exactly. not going to prove it is not going to be. And they don't usually bid. You usually ask for you have you have a request for proposals, and not for request. Oh, excuse me, a request for qualifications. Oh, and yeah. they give you a request for qualifications, and then they might some of them will throw in the number, but if they don't throw in the number, then you have to sit down and negotiate the number. The number is the next thing. The yeah. qualifications are the most important. Thing. Right. So that's actually something that we could do ourselves. Well, I don't know. You want to hire. So, I mean, she's got oh, that's not that's a total di different mindset to do that. So we've got to hire somebody to. I, I I'm not know. saying that. I've just kind of I I I I can't say I can't say that because I don't work here. <laughs> well, and that's I guess that's where I'm coming from. I'm not really sure. This is all very informal. 
Right. When you read our purchasing policy, yeah. it's very formal. This is yeah. going to have to go in the paper. It's going to have yeah. to go on the website. Right, right. And putting out a RFP that says we want to build a new town garage is typically a little more detailed than you would see. And typically you're scoping. The, the fact is, if you don't know what you want and you don't have clear project requirements, typically what's going to end up happening, it's going to cost you a whole lot more in the end of the day because you have no idea what you really want and what you're going for. So that's what I'm trying to avoid. But I just don't have an incredible amount of time to dedicate to this. So if it's, it comes to me, that's fine. I'll probably get to it in October. This is the best I can probably commit to. Can we hire somebody on just an uh, interim short-term basis? That's what, who's an expert? that's what I mean. Okay. And that's what Brookfield had done. They basically said, we want someone who knows this business, who knows how to write a project requirements document to do this for us right. and, so that yeah, then we can go I get can, a bid. And, and the whole idea was to try to save money in the end of the day. Any idea what the cost would be? Well, this was in 2019. They put 15000 as they said they had a budget. Well, that's that's great. Well, that's just putting on a PDF. Yeah, for someone yeah. who knows what they're doing with this, this shouldn't be an incredible amount of time. No, I mean, I, some, some of those things, I looked at BGS's webpage, Building General Services webpage, and they do they go out to bid all the time. And they have requests for proposals in, 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 on their webpage for, for garages, like for works and parks and agency of natural resources and maintenance shops for them and stuff yeah. like that. But it's, a, it's somebody has to sit down and yeah. digest that whole right. thing and just change all the names. Yeah, work for it. That's what I would do. No, yeah, no, that's, what, that's what they're going to do. Yeah, that's yeah. what somebody else would do. I mean, when we were looking for uh, RFPs for Central Vermont Solid Waste District, we actually called the City of Barrie and checked and, and got it got RFPs from them, and then finally had had uh, we had a contractor that did that. Actually, Kathleen Gent, who um was it oh, the Kathleen? yeah was so going it, so I'm going I'm going with it. So I'm going to I've got to hit hit a target here in a second. So Kathleen might be willing to do that. You guys, Kathleen Gent. You can yeah. get her name from the folks at the Central Mont Solid Waste Management District. I could send you. She's still name. working at it. Uh, she's under contract, and she wrote oh. and she wrote those RFPs under contract. Oh, okay. I mean, it just yeah. it just came to me. What the heck? Right. So that would probably give it would save you a lot of time, and she's already has them written in a general way. She'll just ask you a bunch of a few questions. Well, we might, you know it's pretty simple stuff. Right. Maybe it'd be a few grand. Yeah. Yeah, that's what we need to do. Do you want me to send you Barb Baird is the uh, person who um is the administrative person that handles everything? You just send her a note, she'll send you Kathleen's information. Yeah, she sent me that. Yeah, yeah. I, I just thought of it. <laughs> yeah, that'd be good. Yeah. That's the thing. If we could just get someone, we're going yeah. to get a much better quality product going out with yeah. an RFP that actually is yeah. providing some clarity on what we're looking for. And yeah, you know, and down, then sit down with Guthrie, sit down with you and figure out this is, this is the specs that were this is the size or whatever. Yeah. And the other question the select board has to answer is who all is a part of this discussion? For example, the energy committee. Who all are we looping into reviewing well, all of this? Up to this How much control do we give to uh, extraneous other organizations that want to add things to the to the mix? That's well, what I'm asking. Who are all of our stakeholder stakeholders in this process? Because that is that is going to become overwhelming very quickly if we're having to run all of this by all yeah. various, whether it's planning commission or it's energy people. committee or you know you name it. It's that it's it's going to become a, a very involved project very quickly. So get it done. we need to determine. And and by the way, the committee technically is Gene Troya, you, me, and Guthrie. Just to let you know. So if we need to revisit that or tweak that, we can. I thought it was on it. He was not in what I inherited. No, it's actually Gene well, Troy. That's what I think we need to. So we'll switch that out. Okay. So Gene can do it though. Yeah, yeah. yeah right. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I, I will send you I will yeah, that'd be great. Send you Barb's. Okay, okay, so that'll be a start. Yes. And then you need to know who's on the committee. We can talk about that next step. I'm on the committee. Yeah. He's on the committee. Yeah. We do need to listen to other folks who may have some ideas on we what should. they want to see in it. But we can have a meeting with those folks. Right. And we have to keep in mind that you're going to have diminishing returns. You cannot do everything everybody wants you to do because you'll never be able to pay for the building. No, I know that. That's why you that's why you select words. That's why I'm yeah. I'm being I am highly resilient. 
I'm highly resistant to that. Yeah. Adding in five hundred thousand dollar items and this and that. No way. And got people wouldn't go for it. And so Andy Shapiro was a little bit of a question mark for me. I wouldn't start telling that. Recorded or not, I guess whatever. We'll have to see. You you mentioned his name on the for the committee. Well, yeah, I just, well, he has some very good ideas. I mean, part of what I'm saying right now is what he would say. Various, committees, need to have can, various, committees, could, various committees could give input. Yeah. And and then this is the deciding. Yeah. yeah. Well, right. Let's, let's right. listen to everything. And, Absolutely. Right. And there's got to be, there's got to be, there's got to be, there's yeah. got to be hearings. It's, t it's, it's taxpayers' money. Well, of course. <laughs> but it doesn't mean that you know, they're not going to make the final decisions. We'll have input. We will be frugal with the taxpayers' money. Exactly. And, we'll, and, we, and we will solicit input. Yeah, that sounds perfect. Sure. Sounds good. So that we'll that we can solicit away. Exactly. We'll see what happens at the end of the day. Fine. Yeah. Okay. We're there. Oh. Oh. You I, I, okay. Yeah, <laughs> I played golf today. I'm all worn out. Uh, uh, okay, so that took that care of today. it. Took care of the addition of the garage. Now the other was an access permit. Yeah, right here. Yeah, Is it essentially to trench across Lyle Young Road yeah. um, for the purposes of running some yeah, some sewer pipe? Yeah. Ooh, so. Ajax. So, so do we have that? Yeah. You have to give approval for them to cross their last page. We got a color picture. Yeah. Perfect. Oh. So you got that red pipe right there. Yeah, I, I did that little drawing based on my discussion oh, with them today, nice. what they need to do. So okay. it's coming right beside that driveway. Out. Oh, the red pipe. For all our people. There it is. The little red pipe. No, no, it's on the website. Yeah, it's on the website. Okay. So I just, I'm bringing this permit just came into the office this afternoon, but wanted to bring it to you given the nature of it. Is there a problem doing this? Is there a problem? We don't normally allow pipes flowing around the road, do we? Like, so, so we pipe, yeah, they do it all the time. Yeah. You just dig, dig off trench? Well, 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 I actually heard of this from Guthrie. So wrote yeah. Foreman well aware yeah, that yeah. this request is there. He burns smokes. <laughs> no, and so are you. No, I haven't heard any. Never in my whole life. Listen, it's good um, like I think it. that in most cases, when you're crossing a town highway, you have to have psych board approval yeah. to run anything across water line, sewer line, sewer line, line, power line. I guess that's what it's you. You're yeah. you immediately, you're absolutely correct. I have heard of people digging across the road and throwing back out. I have heard of that. I'm sure that's never happened, <laughs> ever. I, la, 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 la. <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I hope I'm singing a good tune. I don't want to hear it. Looks like it's to accept this thing. Oh, wow. this, this, this thing. <laughs> That's a very. Do, do, do we have any specifications? Do we have any specifications? How deep it's supposed to be? Who's going to who's going to make sure that this thing? Overload. Yeah. Here. Yeah. Yes. Okay. All right. Yeah. Actually, I, I miswrote that it's not 230 in the addition yeah. to the agenda. It's actually 025 yeah. is this particular one. So, and I don't have a problem with this. It's sometimes, sometimes we get very really picky about stuff like that. They can. Yeah, that's why we have D and O insurance. So, do you want to get picky? No. Okay, good. No, 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 I'm fine. <laughs> no, good. D and O insurance. Okay. So, did you make the motion? Somebody made the motion. You, you did, right? Who made the second? Directors of office. Zoe, I think, second. Zoe made the second. You have like a general. <laughs> Zoe, you're on mute. I was saying I haven't yet, but I can. Okay, I'll we, second we it. Have a second. All those in favor, please say aye. 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 Motion is carried. It appears to be. Oh. Um, that's. What else did you want to do? The town administrator report before they take your second. Um. Because then that. you can dismiss everybody, right? Yeah. Pretty much. Town administrator report. Um, this I already mentioned it, but Patricia Canada officially joined our team on last Monday, June twelfth. Uh, so just join me in welcoming her. Next is uh, the trash, the issue of trash at a residence on U.S. Route Two. I wanted to give you an update on that. Oh, nice. um, I actually got the update from the person who reached out to me and brought this issue to me that the trash has actually been cleaned up. Oh, wow. And there are now Casella trash cans on the premises. 
So it appears as though the resident has now. The property owner probably did that after hearing us discuss it here. So, um, so the gentleman stopped by to let me know. He was very happy that the crash had been cleaned up. So I drove over there, took a look. Um, yes, has been cleaned up. Um, yes, and I also reached out to the state to Ryan McCall and let him know that that has been cleaned up. So he appreciated that as well. Seth, great job. Thank you. Yeah. Well, I think it would help out with our pressure on very active. Yeah. So there you go. Great job. Yeah, and Dana is the deputy health officer. <laughs> yeah. Oh, she's deputy? Okay, the deputy. Rachel Grossman is your second in command. Yes. Okay. Um, thank you. I'm going on vacation for the next year as a health officer. So maybe I'll pass that on. No, I'm good. No. Thanks. So, what else do we got? We're not allowed to go on vacation. Uh, we have six, six zoning permits that have been essentially applied for. Um, not all of these have been granted, but um, two single family homes. Obviously, you have the curb cut, um, a subdivision, a shed. Yes. That's it. And a boundary line adjustment. Yes, yeah, so that's actually the David Rogers estate. Oh, the one that owes us tax money? They're dividing up the property in one piece, so not all in one lot or whatever. Yeah. yeah. And There's some buildings that are taxed across the properties. Oh, well, yeah. Is that a problem? I don't know. It's kind of, I don't think it's kind of just to visit. The point is that it's not going to make it any easier to collect that money, I guess. I guess maybe they'll sell some of the property and then they'll use it to pay back. Taxes. Well, you're doing a lot of guessing there. Well, they're going to have to. They can't sell a property without paying the taxes. So somebody's going to have to go out and appraise the property from the town, the listed will. Okay. And they only owe us a lot of money. Aren't you being kind of negative? No, I'm not. Because I don't like it when somebody owes the town like a lot of money. I know, but they're going to get, you're going to get the money this way. Let's see. Wait and see. Or you think it's like hold a hand and something or rather this one? Do you, which do you think you're gonna get? Huh? <laughs> you can hold your hand out there all day. You're probably not gonna get any money in it. Who reports over? I I'm not sure. Is the select board report all done? It's very good. You're good. I think we. Scott already meeting, mentioned Scott. that we have the meeting schedule as yeah. part of this document. Very good. Scott. Yeah. Hey, you know this needs to be transparent. Okay, these are the meetings. Black, black and white, Mr. Chairman. Yes, sir. But it should be posted. Right. It's posted in four places, I saw here. I think it is. Okay. But not on a public forum. So. Okay. We have warrants. We can do them. Yes. Okay, I'll do this. So right here. Uh, yeah, and the other, the Washington County contract is there. I can do that for them. Let's do the warrants because you're still a lot of bills. And there is one special warrant there. Michelle cut a check on a warrant of the 15th. Essentially, to move funds from M and T, we're still working on trying to get all that. So we need to sign that. There. Yeah. Okay. He has the actual. Yeah. Original. Let's do this before I didn't see anything crazy in there. No. No. Those pullovers are expensive. That must be the one. Is that going in on Cherry and that's on Monday a week. Yes. And that's down the dip back over. It's actually more up. It's oh, not it's up? the one at the bottom. Oh, okay. It's the one that's up closer to the uh, trailhead. Oh, okay. We we're about ready to mow that field, and he's going to close it on Monday. How long is it going to be closer? I don't know. Hmm. Probably a day or so. What's the Elan um, 
financial that's, services. That's the uh, new town credit card company. Uh -oh. That's the Northfield Savings. Oh, okay. Credit mm -hmm. card. Yeah, I never saw that. Yeah, it's new. Before. This is the first time we're actually paying. Yeah. All right. You want to finish your way back? Thank you. Yes, sir. So we've done the town administrative report. We've done the business. We've done the warrants. So we're pretty well done. Except for the executive session. Mm -hmm. Relatively early to find ourselves. But we're not That's over yet. Wrong with that. We're yeah. not. We're not done yet. I know. I know. Yeah. I know. You're tired from the golf? No, it's good. I played some other executive session. Are we doing? It was tiring. What's that? Um, are we going to an executive session now? Yes. I'll second that. Under title. Yes, yes. Personal matter. Personnel matter and on the exclusion yeah. for those, whatever it is. You so someone made a second? I did. Okay. All in favor, please say aye. 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 So we're out of executive session at 8.50. In any action taken? No action taken. No action taken. There's no action taken. There's no action taken. No taken. In executive session. Okay. Right. There's no action. We don't have any. I would like to make a motion that um, we approve, as select board approves, the FY 2024 East Montpelier employee wages detail uh, sheet effective July 1, 2023. And that is uh, as just an overview of what, what staff will be paid for the ensuing year. We have a second on that? I second it. All in favor, favor, please say aye. 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 The ayes appear to have it, do have it. Anything else? Not that I know. I'd like to make a motion that we adjourn tonight's meeting. Are you making that motion or would you like to make the motion? I am making that motion that we adjourn <laughs> the June 19th, 2023 uh, Town of East Montpelier Select Board meeting. I would, I'd like Zoe to uh, second that. I second it. Awesome. Oh, it's very nice. All in favor, please say aye. 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 aye.